Okay, welcome back everyone. In today's video, I'm going to be going over the process of putting a timing chain on a 5 liter 302 Ford motor. Um, this applies pretty much for all 302s, I would say. So, this is a pretty universal video. This one that we're actually working on is a 95 F-150, but like I said, these are pretty much the same all the way through the years of the 302. So, what you can see me doing right here in the beginning is um, pretty much I'm just taking apart the front of it. I'm getting the fan out of the way as well as the fan shroud. These four bolts, I believe, are a 12 mil that hold the fan to the pulley, to the water pump itself as well. Um, and then after you get that out of the way, the next thing that I do is I go ahead and remove the intake boot going from the mass airflow to the engine to get that out of the way and then the upper radiator hose as well because that's gonna have to go because that's gonna go down on the front of your uh, where your thermostat goes in and that's gonna come off lower radiator hose comes off next because you're gonna have to pull your water pump so as soon as you get the lower radiator hose off the water pump can take those bolts out now one thing I will say, you may want to be careful if you've never removed the front cover bolts. They are notorious for breaking on a 5 liter Ford. So just know that going into it. If you're ever having one that feels like it's going to break, use some heat. Maybe use some heat anyway. Uh, anything you can do really to try to prevent that from breaking. Because uh, those bolts can be fun to extract if you don't have a welder or anything like that. So Once you get to this point here. Your home on a balancer, you should have already removed the bolt before you took the serpentine belt off. You're going to go ahead and pull that off. There's going to be uh, several bolts along here. Go ahead and pull this water neck. This gasket is cheap. Okay, so once you have your pulley removed off of your home on a balancer, I'm going to move all that in a little while and put it in the back of the truck or something. Then you're going to have to have one of these. This is a home on a balancer puller. I also recommend picking up an installer. Um, I am going to for when I go to put this I don't actually own one right now I'm going to go buy one to own once I get done with this and yeah I'm probably not going to get this whole thing put back together today my goal is just to inspect the timing chain today and show y'all just how bad it was what we're doing here is removing the home on a balancer pretty easy you put these three bolts in one bolt through the middle, tighten up the bolt on the middle, and it pulls right off. So, front cover came off without too many issues. It's very, very dirty, and there's a lot of carbon in it. We're going to get that all cleaned up, but uh, I actually messed up. I actually replaced this oil pan gasket just before I did this job and I already ripped the thing out of the middle of it. A little bit upset about it, but... It is what it is, I suppose. Uh, but this timing chain, I don't know. I don't have a lot of experience with timing chains and that such, but I don't think there's supposed to be that much play in it. I think it's supposed to be a lot less than that. So I'm going to go ahead and pull that off. Um, I don't think you have to have a puller to get this. Oh, yeah, you don't. It just slides. See that? It just slides right on off. So you don't even need a puller to get this off. So. Just pull that bolt out and pull them out together, and then you're good to go. Okay, so, so we have a dot here and a dot there. Now this is the this is the double roller chain here. This is what was on here before, so I wanted to go back. This is how much play you have in a new one. So as you can see, it's significantly better than what we already had. I mean that's this was pretty sloppy on each side um anyway so you can see they're perfectly lined up here good way to tell is if this is pointing down and you can see your keyway you're pretty close so now what I recommend when putting the front cover back on is four dabs of RTV if you didn't break this then you may not need it but I'm gonna put one here here there if you can see okay there and then there 
And then I'm actually going to put a thin layer on each side of the timing cover gasket just because of I don't want it to leak. So, and don't forget to reinstall your um, cam gear retention bolt right here. Okay, so what we've done here is we got the timing chamber back on and everything, and it's all bolted back together. Um, I did install this. 351 Windsor fan shroud. Um, I thought since this hit right here that that would be the factory fan shroud. But it turns out it's not because I had to drill holes in the radiator to bolt it. But this doesn't hit anymore and I don't have to zip tie it to there. So I don't know. That's fixed. My AC is also a little bit colder. I'm happy with it. Anyway, so I ended up getting it put back together and I couldn't really get it to run at all. So, I actually unplugged the mass airflow sensor and finally got it to run. And I was able to set my base timing at 10 degrees. I actually had bought a new distributor for it because I thought that the old distributor had went out. But, turned out that it didn't matter. Regardless, unplugged this, got my timing set. And then I kept having running issues out of it. Like it was running worse than it was before. So, I ended up messing with TPS and it was low so I adjusted it set it to like 0.8 and now it runs okay but the drivability is still not great it still has like a sputter and it's not very powerful and I'm unsure if that's because of the motor being tired I mean usually if there's not like burnt valves or loss of compression you're okay but I don't know this truck has almost 400,000 miles on it so 360 something so it's hard to tell but I mean it runs the belt wheels So I didn't really want to make a video until I had a good understanding of what was going on with this truck. But what I think happened is that when I had done the oil pan gasket, which was leaking, I ended up unbolting the exhaust and when I bolted it back up it was leaking. And that was whenever I was getting those codes 181 for the mass airflow, high voltage and low voltage. I was also getting an oxygen sensor code at that point. So what I'm thinking was happening was that the exhaust leak was causing the, because the exhaust leak was pretty bad. It was right at the collectors. I'm thinking that when I did that, I caused the the O2 sensor to read wrong, which caused the mass airflow sensor to read wrong, because I'm not getting those codes anymore. So I'm only getting the vehicle speed sensor now. So, and that one's not going to, I actually cleared it, so we'll see next time I drive it what it does. But I think overall, this truck is fine. Um, I am getting, if I do it now, I'm getting system pass, actually. So I can show you that. So if I do key on engine off, make sure ignition is off, and that our AC is not on, I want to go ahead and click continue. So, we're getting system pass now, which is basically fine readings, and the truck starts pretty much first try. It idles really well. Um, as I said, the miles are that on it. So, what we're looking for right here in this next clip is you're looking for the rag to be sucked back into the exhaust. And what that tells you is that you have a burnt valve basically what's happening is instead of pushing the exhaust out whenever it closes it's actually sucking air back in through the tailpipe 
which basically means there's a crack in the valve and that's what we call a burnt valve so it's pretty much what you're looking for here in this next clip <laughs> So you can hear we are still running a little bit rough. Um, I think that at this point, I just did that rag test. You can see, pretty sure I have a burnt valve in one of the cylinders. I'm not going to fix it. Um, I'm just going to drive the truck as is and kind of deal with the small problems it has, the lack of power and stuff like that. Whenever I have a, I have a Bronco, I want to get done. Whenever I get the Bronco done, I think we're going to take this thing into the shop and get a good motor in it. And that should eliminate a lot of our problems. But we definitely have a burnt valve on the exhaust side. So, um, at the very least, the cylinder has need to come off. But I know we have a cold piston that's rattling around in that bore. Might as well go ahead and fix that too and get a good motor in this thing. That I can hopefully get another 200,000, 300,000 miles out of. Because this motor has been in this truck probably since it was original and I think I'm gonna rebuild it and keep the original motor with this truck because it would almost be a shame to try to put another motor in this thing I may do a 351 swap um, for the extra power because I do want to do some towing with this truck not anything crazy just like my boat and maybe like a 14 foot trailer with some four wheelers on it but yeah we'll talk about all that in the future so